What's going on, YouTube? It's Donnie B all day. All right, guys, I'm bringing you something pretty cool. I've had sitting around for a while, and normally when knives of mine are sitting around for a while, they're out of the box, and the box is gone. For some reason, this thing has stayed in the box. That means I haven't even taken it out yet, except to examine it when it came in. And this M9 bayonet is from Cisco Supplies, which has given me some pretty good knives um over time i think i think after you guys fall down i'll explain to you about the three that i've already gotten from them that are really really good um i have the primitive buoy that you guys all seen the carbon the um the high carbon buoy that everybody knows about um that's a classic and i brought you another small hunter you guys just keep spinning um and so now i'm bringing you this thing right here and Oh, I'm pretty happy to be bringing it to you because it's a really cool piece. I'm just going to leave it like that. You guys will figure it all out. Um, this is it. This is it. This is a standard size and look and feel um, M9 bayonet. And uh, I actually had one in Afghanistan, but I couldn't mount it because I didn't have an A-frame, uh, an A-post sight on the, the front of my uh, barrel. So I couldn't mount it and I was kind of kind of upset because I really wanted to do that. But this is what we have here. You have your sheath, which has this reel right here is releases, right? So I'll take my sweet ass time doing that for you guys. Um, it releases so you can mount and, and unmount the belt piece here without taking it off. Um, that is removable, so you can just use the molly. Um, I happen to think it works really good, so I leave it on there because it's a very good um, belt sheath. On this sheath, you also have your removable gear pouch. It is not rubber lined, so you will not hold moisture. That's a plus. The actual sheath itself is a hard plastic. And before I get into the actual knife, the actual knife, I want to get into right here this right here this little genius digger right there what a lot of people don't know is it's a uh it's a wire cutter right and once i stop screwing around and put it on there i'll show you so basically you put a little piece of wire in there and then you cut it that's why if you'll notice on the m9 bayonet uh the swedge is a wedge grind it's called a wedge grind because they only do one side and the reason for that is so you can have that scissor like um piece right here and it's a genius thing so you have your saw back you have your squared or rectangular um fullers here which are really good you have your um you have your actual edge and you have a nice fat ricasso which is good this right here, I don't, this is the first time I don't have any uh, AR-15s in the house. Um, but this would go through your barrel, right? And this would attach to your front sights. And what will happen is, if this is the barrel and your sights are down here, it slides this way. Oops, sorry, upside down. It slides this way. And this right here clicks to your to your site you know the one that looks like this the front site um and that's that's how your bayonet fits on the rifle um these are made perfect perfect to fit on any ar-15s you know your standard size so basically in the military we use a um, 16 inch barrel and the front sight post is going to be the same on all of them if you have that style front sight um you do have knurled um, gripping right here it kind of has that pineapple grenade look to it uh, but just in a cylinder um, it's really cool so it's a very very nice piece um, now a lot of Cisco supply stuff you're gonna see Pakistan across the top this one was made in China does that make it not good I haven't had a bad Cisco product yet and they're cheap they're cheap Cisco products are dirt cheap and um, but like I said, I haven't had a bad one. So we're going to go through this. Let's go over some of the specs real quick. That is a beefy, nice beefy uh, scabbard there. 
So overall, we're looking at 12 and three quarter inches. The um, handle is an ABS. It's a hard ABS, which is basically another word for plastic. Um, you have your sawback heavy gauge stainless steel blade. I believe it's 440. I'm not sure. It might be better. Um, and then your heavy duty military sheath, the blade itself. Cats are doing something back there. The blade itself is, it should be around eight inches. Let's see if I can, there we go. And it's, yeah, seven and three quarter inches. So that's what we have. And um, this is basically what you get, you know, when you have that, um, that Rambo first blood knife, it came off of this. The M9 Bayonet um, created Jimmy Lyle's production Rambo first blood blade. That's exactly where this came from. Instead of having a barrel hole and a lug mount, he has an unscrewable area with a compass. And instead of having your barrel hole up here, he has a flat head and a Phillips head screwdriver on his handguard. Um, that's the difference. The blade is almost exact. It's almost exact, except it doesn't have a wedge uh, right here. The swedge is both sides. It doesn't have a hole here. And um, it doesn't have that. You see, you guys all know the Rambo knives. But it's very, very similar. I know I have one I could easily show you. Ah, screw it. I'll show you. Hold on a second. All right, so when you have as many knives as I do... Um, saying, hold on, I'll show you is a daunting task. So here you have the first blood and your basic, um, M9 bayonet. You can see how very, very similar they are, right? Um, round handle, round handle, round butt, round butt, hand guard, hand guard, saw back, saw back, wire cutter, wire cutter. That's what that line is down the center of your saw back. Um, clip point, swedge. Uh, it's pretty much almost the exact same thing. Um, except this one says John Rambo. Um, so basically, that's what it is. You know, and when I have a, when I say I have a lot of knives, I have a lot of knives. Um, and I go through my knives. I use them all the time. So I'm constantly rotating. So that. I used a while ago and it was so far down the pile. It was a bitch to get out. But I did it for you guys because of true love. True freaking love. So let's see here. I don't need this anymore. That's sweet. Sweet. Just glide. Speaking of glide, let's see. Let's see. The old Cisco blades. Some of them come shave sharp. Some of them don't. Um, and the thing is, you can get the same model, right? Twice, and one of them will be shave sharp and the other one won't be. Um, this one is not shave sharp, it looks like. It's breaking some hairs, but it's not gonna, it's not gonna baby butt your butt. Um, baby butt your ass. So basically that's what we have right there. As far as the edge, it's seared through cardboard like it wasn't even there, um, but it's not shave sharp. Let's take it outside and get some business done. All right, so I have some galvanized steel fencing here. So what we're going to try and do is cut some. And when I say try, I mean uh, we're going to cut some. I lost it. We're going to cut some steel real quick. So basically all you're doing is slipping the wire inside that notch and then closing on it. Let's see here. And that's it, man. It is as simple, simple as that cutting out a hole so you guys can see well it's in there there's a hole gone right there it's really really that easy i mean watch this watch this guys see that watch Boop. gone um and so we'll look at the spine where the uh the cutting is taking place is there any dents is there any dings is there any areas that are flattened out no this thing will work you need to take down a fence clip 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 that's what you use so that's awesome. Also, it is ambidextrous. You can put it in both sides. Good for us lefties. All right, let's keep going. All right, so here we are at the Stump of Dreams. Let's do some four-foot drops. We'll see how the balance goes. Oop. We'll see how that tip bite is just from a gravity drop. Roscoe, get back up here, boy. 
do that again. That thing drops just about as straight as you'd want a knife to go. All right, we're gonna do a couple hard downward throws. We'll see how it, uh, it all holds up. Oh my gosh, that is, that is pretty solid actually. That is solid, that thing went in there. Oh, you guys, you could hear that. Look at this, look at this, man. That thing was deep. All right, so let's get some prying done. Wow, it's literally just taking the wood out. Let's do just a lean. See if the tip's gonna snap off. And instead of the tip snapping off, we just dug out some wood. Let's see, are we having any bends or any fouled areas? No, it's perfect. Um, let's see, I got a little brick here. I'm gonna use the spine, not the edge, because I'm not an ass. So we're gonna use that little saw just to uh, put a little beating down on this brick. We'll see what happens here. Here we go. Split that. Let's check the uh, let's check the saw. We'll knock out some of that brick dust. And it is unflawed condition, right? So now the um, the saw is also a wedge grind. I just found out. I didn't even know that on this. So your saw right here is flat. Your saw right here is wedged. And I don't know if that means you can also use that somehow, but I don't know. Um, all I know is that it's like that. No idea why. All right, so here we go. We got some rope, we'll try a push cut first. It's not gonna push cut. Let's see. But it does saw through, it does take some work, so it could use some sharpening out of the box. But. Remember, it's a bayonet. Bayonets are fighting knives. It's made to fight. Can this thing slice through flesh, you know, and bone and whatnot with this edge as it is? That's what we're gonna find out by using a little tree because nobody's letting me cut through their flesh and bone. So let's go, uh, let's go see how she works as a fighter. All right, so let's take a little swat at this. It's gonna be kind of hard to get at. I'm going to try and hold you. Let's see if we can keep you in it. Hey, let's see. Holy Moses. So, I mean, is it going to tear through uh, flesh? Is it going to tear through, um, you know, bone and things like that if you get attacked in the middle of the night by a Bigfoot breaking in your home? <laughs> yeah. So let's see. We got this guy right here growing. Let's take off a couple of those. It's all thorny, so let's see how well she slices right through. It, well, actually chopped pretty good, and I left it hanging. You can see right there, it's got a nice, clean slice. It's, about, it's wobbly, but you know what? When you hit a person, they're going to wobble too, especially if you hit them right. Look at that long slice. Woo! That one went all the way down. That was pretty good. I got another one right here. Yeah, we got to get rid of these thorns somehow. Why not bayonet them? Bayonet them. Look at that. That is clean, guys. That is clean. Try the nice thick part down here. Clean. Clean, clean. So, that's pretty easy. That's pretty easy. Let's come over here. You guys take a quick walk with me since we're already, we're already there. Throw that down. Oh, yeah. All right, let's post you up right here. It's kind of getting late. Later in the evening, so we kind of got dim light here. But, uh, let's see. Let's see, I got one of these sitting around. Let's uh, take off some of the branches here so we can get the use on this guy. Nice, nice, nice. All right, so we wanna make this to a size we need, so let's, let's do some chopping with it. Oh my goodness. It actually uh, has pretty good bite. Pretty good bite. All right, keep an eye on them dogs. Hey, he's <laughs> We don't know what it means, but for some reason they always do. All right, so we're just gonna skin with it. Skin some of this bark off, some of this top bark. Look at this. Look at this, looks like side so mel. Yeah, baby. Look at that, look at a palm tree. All right, so let's get some action going with it. Let's get a spot where those aren't. 
Holy mackerel. So, uh, so like bushcrafty stuff. I mean, you got to remember this was made a long time ago for, uh, for warfare that takes you to places where you might need to be able to do some bushcraft, you know? And, uh, it is not, uh, not failing. And this isn't even a government issue. This is a Cisco, right? But it's getting the job done. It's getting the job done. It's going to make your, it's going to make your, uh, tent spikes. It's going to make, Hey, get back here. It's going to make your, uh, spears and arrow tips and all that jazz. But it's going to do literally everything you need it to. Let me go yell at some dogs here. You know, if you look up cool in the dictionary, there's a good shot. You're going to find a picture of a bloodhound. The problem is if you look up dumbass in the dictionary, you're going to find that same picture. All right. So let's try and see if I can hold it to use the saw. If not, we'll have to just go down somewhere and use it. Oh, it's working, but it's really hard to hold something and saw it. Oh, we're going to have to go down and do something. Come on. All right. So this might be better. This might be better. We got a little branch here. We can actually put it down and see if we can't work this thing. Let's see. Oh, yeah. I know this motion in this area looks a little grim, guys, but believe me. It's as good for me as it is for you. All right, so let's keep going here. Let's see how we're doing. That, my friends, is quality sawing. Look at that. Look at that, man. So let's just turn the, turn the stick a little bit. Continue. See what we can get out of here. Wow, that is pretty good, guys. That's pretty good right there. Uh, that's making a, a really nice hole. And, uh, you know, you're not supposed to be sawing through things that thick. It's supposed to be things like this, you know what I mean? You're sawing through something short, which it works just fine, but so does that. So I don't understand the point. But it works. It works. Gets the job done. Gets the freaking job done all right before we uh before we get to to throw this thing somebody asked me a while ago if uh if i could during some some videos not all videos but tell a little story about my time in afghanistan and some of the things and i, I told them that you know there's certain things you can tell and certain things you can't right there's certain stories that you know we could talk about but it means you're a classless puke and anybody who usually talks about those stories openly means it never really happened with them anyway and they're telling somebody else's story because any real soldier doesn't talk openly like that so i like to talk about the lighter stuff some stuff some crazy stuff and uh here's something on the lighter note lesser than the crazy note afghanistan right it uh the winters there are winters the winters there are crazy crazy winters and they get a lot of snow. We had a blizzard. I'm talking blizzard out there. And it was during a football game. So, of course, my half numb nut ass is up on a banister with a broom sweeping every commercial out there, sweeping out the uh, satellite dish so we could watch this game, right? Go Patriots. And um, to do it, I had to stand on a snow and ice covered banister and reach up to a roof with a broom and do it because Army Strong. Um, but Hey, we got to watch the game. So here's the thing with all the snow, you know, especially being a new Englander, um, and traveling with a, a, you know, a unit from new England, a battalion. Um, we know snow, we know snowballs and, and things like that. We didn't realize how much Afghans know snow. They know snow. So I had a buddy of mine, me and my man, Jeff, we would, uh, we would wait for some of the um, some of the locals who were doing security, right? They, they'd come to their gate and they'd wait on, on their shift. They'd be walking across the uh, walking across the fob to get to their post, and uh, we'd wait for them to come through the gates. And as they started walking across, we'd be hiding somewhere with a bunch of snowballs already made. Like we'd have fifteen snowballs already ready at the arm to just let go on these dudes. And uh, so we found out quick that it's really hard to pick a snowball fight with guys from Afghanistan because they're machines, man. These guys are machines with snowballs. So 
they're walking through it or on their way to their gate and they're cutting through the fob and they're just having a good time talking they have no idea we're there and we come out from from behind a couple barrels and whatnot <laughs> yeah i use it to itch myself um and we start pelting these guys with snowballs and we got the jump on them so we're feeling pretty good i'll tell you what no matter <laughs> how many snowballs you have sitting and ready to go it doesn't matter because the time it takes them to make brand new ones is the same time it takes you to throw old ones these guys are snowball freaking throwing experts and um i'll tell you what if if snowball throwing ever became an olympic sport we would have to watch out for afghanistan i mean we'd have to employ all uh, every american olympian would have to be from alaska because i think those are the only people that would be able to to take them on in a fight with snowballs these guys were great spirited too these guys had uh great personalities about it they love getting bombarded because, you know, they get to fire them back, and they felt pretty good about that. Um, but, I mean, they're, they laugh. They laugh, and, and they, they love to play and have fun. But um, just a little something about some time in Afghanistan. And uh, if, you know, if people, you know, I've been out now for a little while, and I got my my dress blues back in, who let's see, 2012, I think, or maybe just before that, I got my dress blues because we had the greens and then it went to blues. So it was somewhere in between 12 and 14. And right now it's 2019, so it's been five years of me being out. And people wonder, you know, I wonder what you looked like back then. Well, hold on a second, I want to show you. In case you were wondering, mine still fits. <laughs> still fits, baby. Still fits. As a matter of fact, it even fits better now than it did then. Whoo, got to be all day. You can get older, but that doesn't mean you have to get crappy. Age means nothing if you do it right, son. All right, hold on a second. All right, uh, let's see how she do. Uh, hopefully, you guys will be standing up there. I'll put you on a round log, but we'll see how it works. We will see. <laughs> all right, so I have thrown bayonets in the past. I have not thrown this bayonet. And that, oh, it's, I hope he got in the shot. That was a stick, man. That was a five-yard stick. So Cisco Supplies, the M9 bayonet. This thing works, guys. This is this is a bayonet I would have no qualms about putting on the end of my rifle and diving into the guys who aren't so friendly throwing snowballs with us. This thing right here is awesome. This is this is as true a bayonet as you're gonna find. And it's dirt cheap, dirt cheap. For, for the quality you're getting and for what you're getting, this is a really good bayonet at a really better price. Um, I don't know, not much more to say about it. The thing held up, it's awesome. The edge is still exactly where it was. I could use to sharpen it, but again, it's stainless steel, so it's gonna sharpen up pretty fast. Um, look at that sunset back there, guys. You're getting, look at that, look at that with that knife. Whoo, man, the sun will never set on this guy right here, though. Never. This is good. This is a little workhorse right here. So that's it. That's it. The M9 Bayonet by Cisco Supplies. I'm Donnie B. All day. Until next knife.